I've seen sulfur-crested cockatoos my whole life. I've always viewed them as creatures of pure chaotic energy. Raucous and destructive. But it wasn't until recently that I realized they are so much more than that. They have wildly different personalities, a very complex hierarchy and social structure, and are incredible problem solvers. So as a way of saying thank you to my favorite cockies, I want to give them a gift. What I didn't expect was to learn even more about these intelligent creatures. Let's get started. I love my cockies, but okay, they're wild birds, they're not exactly my birds. But over the past two years, I've come to know many of these wild cockatoos very well, visiting our balcony almost every day for snacks of seeds and fruit. In fact, I found their behavior so fascinating that back in 2020, I decided to start making puzzles for them to solve, and each puzzle design got more and more complex. And they continued to amaze me in their ability to figure them out in their relentless pursuit of a reward. So naturally, I wanted to thank my feathered friends with a gift. But what kind of present do you give a wild cockatoo? Well, one they can destroy, of course. Cockatoos are crazy smart, but they're also famous for being crazy destructive. And for good reason. Their huge beaks have a bite force of over 350 psi, and they have no issue tearing their way through obstacles and barriers if that's an option, and they've certainly broken a number of my puzzles in the past. Some time ago, I discovered that I also love breaking into cardboard boxes to retrieve a treat, so I thought it'd be a fun project to make them specifically design boxes this Christmas for them to open. Birds are sensitive to a very large number of chemicals and pigments, so it was crucial that every part of the present was bird safe, just in case they ingested anything. So I decided to make everything from scratch, from the box, all the way up to the wrapping paper. To create a folded box, you first need a net. A net is a flat pattern of a 3D shape, and well, I'm honestly not sure why it's called a net, but through a combination of cut and scored lines, you can turn cheap, thin material like paper or cardboard into a huge range of products and packaging. Nets can be used to create incredibly complex 3D geometry and have the added benefit of being able to be transported flat. But let's be real, being interested in net design is a pretty nerdy thing. So anyway, I have this amazing book full of net designs. And for this project, I wanted to avoid the need for any kind of tape or glue, because tape could very easily stick to their beaks, and commercial glue, I'm not really sure how safe it would be for them to ingest. I really like this design, which folds the side walls over flaps to be locked securely in place with tabs and slots, but it's the wrong size. So to turn it into a bird-sized cube, I went about resizing the vectors in Illustrator before adding some branding, which I'm sure the cockatoos will appreciate. I chose these A2 folios because they turned out to be the most accessible and economical source of recycled cardstock. Yeah, go figure. You can totally draw and cut out net designs by hand, but I'm lazy, so I have this laser cutter, which can not only cut the outline, but also score and mark the material by running at a lower setting and moving at higher speeds. Once the sheets were cut to size, it was really easy to run each job back to back, and as long as you save the cut and score vectors on different layers, you can easily assign the different settings and cut order, which is really important because you want to cut the final outline last so the material doesn't shift around. Cardstock laser cuts really easily and produces a surprisingly clean edge. I definitely recommend trying it, but still keep an eye on it in case it decides to catch fire. It took a little trial and error to get the score lines correct, but they really help with assembling the boxes and the folded lid is snug, but not impossible to remove. So with that, it's time to move on to the wrapping paper. I spent way too much time researching food safe paint recipes and cross-referencing that with bird safe foods, but I figured if they can eat wheat, then using flour as a thickener should be okay. So I landed on a kind of paper mache style mix. And in terms of coloring, I bought some blueberries to try, as well as turmeric, which I know from experience stains everything it touches, a rich burnt yellow. My first test was a complete disaster. I really haven't used these portable gas stoves much before, and the burner was way more powerful than I expected, which basically turned the first batch into pancakes. But after a quick reset and adding the flour slowly to the water instead of the other way around, I felt more confident to try coloring the mixture with blueberries. I really don't know what I was expecting, but the squished goop from the berries was not at all the color of the skin. So I figured it might work instead to add the skins to the water and flour mixture and bring the heat up slowly so they might steep and leach out that gorgeous purple color. It's pretty crazy how the viscosity changes. The mixture went from super runny 
to the thickness of yogurt within seconds of reaching a certain temperature. I found myself having to stir constantly to keep it from clumping. Yeah, as you can probably guess, I don't make many thickened sauces. After a lot of vigorous stirring, I strained the blueberry bits out of the mix. I was left with this goop, which honestly, it's a color. I'm not really sure what color I was expecting or what you'd call it. It's certainly not purple, but maybe gray purple. Not a highlight color in any case. But the attempt using turmeric turned out a lot better. In this case, the color is actually much more vivid. It honestly looks a bit like a batch of pumpkin soup or something and has a similar consistency, but it has that strong turmeric smell, which I'm not really a fan of. I bought a roll of recycled craft paper and had this amazing idea of creating a custom roller using a combination of my logo and cute parrot vectors embossed onto a cylinder in Fusion 360 that I then printed out in PLA plastic. And if you think there's no possible way this could ever work, then You'd be correct, it was a complete failure. It kind of does the opposite of what I wanted, leaving the bird and logo areas paint free while smearing a thick goopy mess over the butcher's paper. Still, the DIY paints uh, paint well with a paintbrush. It takes a while to dry, because again, it's water-based, but it leaves a nice texture behind and actually seems to strengthen the fragile craft paper quite a bit as well. So if a custom printed roller is a fail, what about stamps? Using a laser cutter to custom engrave stamps is already like very well established in industry. So I modified some vectors to create a negative engrave where everything will be cut away except for the shape of the stamp itself. Ideally, you'd use some kind of special rubber for this, but I found that EVA foam works okay for short-term use. But you can't use stamps without ink, and my DIY paints certainly didn't work well with them at all, so back to the YouTubes for research, and I came across this incredibly wholesome video on Sketchy, where Dylan makes some natural ink using fresh beetroot. The color is really rich and vivid, so off to the supermarket we go again. This sad beetroot was all I could find, but it'll have to do. Roughly following his method, I grated it up on the fine side of a cheese grater and proceeded to make a massive mess. If you don't want red hands, then it's best to use gloves and do not wear clothes you care about, because it gets everywhere. I decided to grate as much of the beetroot as possible, but be careful not to grate yourself in the process as it gets smaller and more slippery. Because if you do cut yourself, it's um, not really easy to tell, and I'm not sure blood is safe for birds. Is human blood safe for birds to eat? Oh. The resulting pulp is full of this rich purpley pink juice, and I took it to a sieve and squeezed it through by hand, and I'm not ashamed to admit that it was incredibly satisfying to do. For the final wrapping paper, I decided to paint alternate washes of the flower-based paints before then stamping the various shapes randomly using the beetroot ink. If you water it down, it makes an incredible watercolor-like wash, but for stamping, I found it was best to be left undiluted, and with a bit of practice and a quick DIY ink pad, I think I got pretty decent at it by the end. Some of the stamps work better than others, but I am stoked with the end result. I filled some of the boxes with a few tasty seeds and a single almond, and then finally realized a flaw in my plan. If I was going to wrap the boxes in wrapping paper, then I have to use tape, and I didn't want to use tape in the first place because it might stick to the bird's beaks and uh, anyway. Luckily enough, there's an easy solution to that because what I had basically already made was glue with the flour and water mixture. And I used that to applique some choice areas of the wrapping paper into place on the box before finally finishing them off with a small cute bow of jute twine because I know from past experience that the cockatoos love to undo knots. And this is the final result. And here's the result, and I just absolutely love the look of it. It's got this artisanal quality to it that wouldn't look out of place in a craft market where there might be handmade soaps or candles inside. But in the case of mine, these have a date with destruction. So let's see what the cockatoos think of them.
Thank you so much for watching. I had an absolute blast making these little custom gifts for the cockatoos and they certainly enjoyed tearing them to pieces. So I do wish you a very happy and safe holiday season and new year, no matter where you are in the world. It's my aim here on Makers Muse to empower creativity through technology and 2022, fingers crossed, is gonna be a good year. I have lots of things planned and I can't wait to share them with you. So till then, I'll catch you guys very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you guys later, bye.